Hey, welcome to Vice Grip Garage. A little while ago, Feller put up a video of a Plymouth Duster, and you Mopar guys kind of just came out of the woodworks there. And I've had three, possibly four requests. When are you going to do another Mopar? So I did the right thing and just went on the line and snipped me up this 1964 Dodge Dart, and she's the GT flavor. Of course, I know absolutely nothing about darts and she hasn't run in many 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 years but I'm gonna try to fire it up and just scoot it home it's only about 120 miles you're welcome skeeters are already just thick Well, this beauty here is technically a third generation. Those ran from 63 to 66, with some changes in 65. They had three kind of levels there on the square. Mopar is really good at just making up trim levels that don't mean anything. There was a 170 and then the 270. Sure. Then they just went right to the GT, whatever that meant. 64s, they still had the 225 or the 170 slant 6 in them and had the torque flights. We should walk around this thing, I guess, and see what we got going on. I got sucked into the local watering hole, so it's already 1 o'clock. I just, I don't have much time. We're going to have to be just Caleb on the spot today. I'll be completely honest with you. I overpaid for this car. And I even paid a little extra to have all four of these slots put on, and that's really what kind of just drew me into the vehicle. I can already see she's had the safety delete. You don't need them bumpers. It just weighs you down. We got some air vents. That's for drifting. The smoke just shoots out of here. These tires, they rub. You know, cleans up the sidewalls automagically. Up front... I think we've also got a safety delete. Yeah, so we've got the Ram Air injection. That's another fancy Mopar option. Weirdest bumper brackets I've ever seen in my life. That seems fine. Last time this was technically used was a billboard. And I think they scooted it up at the softball championships and local businesses threw their name on it and kind of just sat out front. But she hasn't run in a long time. Let's see what we got in here. Ooh, she's got a car alarm, squeaky door hinge. Oh, it's got a very welcoming scent. It's kind of like Neosporin and burnt toast. Might remind you of grandma's maybe. Right away, I noticed this. Here's your park lever, and then you got your select automatic transmission. Just don't confuse it for the radio and punch reverse at 90. Don't ask me how I know. Seats are... This is completely factory. They wound them up on the sides a little bit more for California and Arizona. That way the sun doesn't get down on them. Is this an entire windshield? My goodness gracious. I'm going to get sidetracked doing poppies all day. We got keyage. That's good. We'll get in the trunk here in a second. Got some trim. There's the grill. Oh, we got headlights after all. Some custom paint. What flavor is that? Butterscotch. I'll use it. Brake parts. That's good. Rear seat's actually in pretty decent shape. Headliner looks just perfect. No issues there. Got some visors. Floor. I mean, I'll just ignore this rust hole, but other than that, it's rust. That's fine. Back here is semi-decent dish. It says it's got all oh, 116,000. 
Maybe 216. No, I'm gonna go with 116,000. Hinges look pretty decent. Based on the pedals there too. Oh, we got dual car alarm on this. And oh, we got rear lenses. No hardware, but that's what zip ties are for. So our safety level just went up about 3%. Ooh, we got poverty caps. Three of them. You don't need four. Got a headlight. What's this here? I don't know if that's the front or the rear bumper. But there's a 50% chance I'll get it right mounting it up. That's good. How do you run this? Oh, whoops. That's, oh, there's spring. See, so just... Wow. Sure. That's plumb empty. Nothing important. Dash pad is... Well, that's bad. But that's okay. Some crackage up there. Nothing awfully too bad. The sills are decent. This is an all beat in. I don't know. That's glass. I guess we'll get in the body carrier and see what we got back there. Gotta have 19 keys to run a Mopar. Nope. I knew that was gonna happen. This one maybe? There we go. Well, I got used tires for sale. Is this one any good? Nope. Is this one any good? Nope. Is this one any good? Nope. Ooh, there's a shot. Might have a spare. We got a starter. Oh, she dipped. There's another bumper. We got bumperage. Oh, hey, look. We got another spare. That's flat. Scotch locks. That's how you know the electric is really good. That bulb looks fine. Is this a relay in the trunk? Great. More wiring over here. Got more bulbage. These might even work. We'll just have to wait and see what happens there. I think the one in the trunk might be the back one. Time to see what's under the power barn here. And if the paint's correct, we've got a 426 Hemi. It is. No, no, it's not a Hemi. Not even close. Ooh, we got a block heater. Here's what we're working with today. A couple things I immediately noticed is the reservoir bag and a block heater. Them are nice. But like I was saying, they came with two flavors of the Slant 6. The 170 and then the big leaning tower of power. The 225 here. and This thing barked out about 145 horsepower. Real horsepower. Looks pretty dang complete actually, and she's been tinkered on. I see some fairly new digitals back here actually at some point. Blue coil. I mean, the ignition's been messed with. That's a Motorcraft oil filter. That doesn't really make sense, but we'll roll with it. It is complete though. I mean, got all the hoses. Belts are on it. Another security device. You run the red ones to your ground, see? And your black ones to your positive. That way if someone's going to steal your rig, you just burn her down to the ground instead. Brake master's on it. How do you run this now? Linkage isn't stuck. We might be off to a pretty decent start here. I mean, overall, she's got more graffiti than a box car. A little rough, missing a couple pieces, but I think most of it's in the car. So we might have a shot here. I'm gonna start by just doing some basics on the engine here. Let's see if it rolls over by hand. And then we'll start checking some fluids and stuff and get right to it. See if she spins over pretty confident these slant sixes were really durable engines the semi good news here is I'm a little familiar with the 225 I've had a handful of dusters with them in it 
The thing I've kind of noticed though is the timing chain just likes to delete on them. So I'm going to grab the fan here, which is a Directo Drive 3000, no clutch on it. See if I could spin the engine over. And I'm pretty sure it'll spin, maybe, most likely. We'll see. But what I'm really going to be listening for is just the timing chain and gears just to be snapping and doing kind of that thing in there. Here we go. Oh, it spins very easy. I hear some valve train, which is normal. But nothing's binding up. I think we're I think we're in good shape. What have we got in here? What have we got in here? There's no juice in there. All right. Well, on we go. Well, guys should probably check on the juices anyhow. That's burnt. Smells like a grass fire. That's fine. We'll just pretend we didn't see that. Move over to the walls. Oil's fine. I might not even change that. Well, probably will if it runs. I mean, we got juices. I think I'm just gonna stick a battery in it and see if it spins over. But first I'm gonna disconnect the fuel pump or at least the carb from it. I have no idea what's in the tank and it'd be nice not to just suck a bunch of crud up in this thing. I think a guy will just disconnect it right here before the old pump later. Then I don't have to fart around with any of the rest of the stuff here. Wow, how come I can't fit my arm in here? Can't see nothing. Wow. What kind of a player do you need? I just... 17 minutes later, got nothing done. Well, the guy did run out of patience. So I did the right thing and just persuaded it off. It's gonna be short now and near impossible to put back on, but that's okay. Drop a battery in this thing and see if we can get her to spin. This battery is actually out of my 69 Camaro and it was dead yesterday. So I put it on boost overnight and she was just boiling this morning. It smelled like a chemical fire. So I think it's rejuvenated. There. Oh, we got just enough reachage. She's taunt. That's all right, it'll act as a battery holder downer as well. Hmm. Pretty nifty. Guy always wants to do what I call the fire test. You buy a rig you know nothing about and drop a battery in her. When you throw that positive in, just, you know, start smelling for fire. No sparkage. No, I'm just getting 30 weight and dead needles. I think we're good. Similar to the Ford Motor Company, Mopar also had the steel me junction right here on the firewall. We'll see if we get this thing to spin over. Spins fine. Fairly decent too. Got it. Yeah. We got stockage. Oh, what was that? We do got an Alcatraz choke on here. She's just locked up. I think get some juice on the side and free that up. And it just needs a little bit. I did bring along some sparkulators and lightning hoses and oil, things like that, but I ain't gonna waste it on it if she don't fire off. 
So I'm just trying to get right to her. I got some gas I drained out of my snowblower from two seasons ago. That should be fine. That's way, way too much. Perfect. Got my key here, and I think we'll just tickle it and see if it barks. We got negative barkage. Try her again. Well, I guess we'll move on to the old sparkulator system. She's just not getting lightning, I bet. There's about 27 different ways a guy can check for spark here. I actually wrote a book about it in 2006. Nope, I didn't do that. But anyway, guy could start all the way at the plug. You can pull the plug out, ground her out. You get one of these Testo Light 600s. Little bulb goes boop, boop. You get spark. You could pull the coil wire, bring it right up to a plug. You can pull the wire right off the coil, hold the test light or screwdriver. Spark will jump there. If you're really desperate, just pull the wire, lay it on a valve cover, and you'll get lots of lightning. Just make sure you don't got any spilt fire juice because she's going to go right up. So I got the light bulb in it over here, just easier for you guys to see. And uh, we'll turn her over and see what we get. No spark. Oh, guy just got to work backwards. We'll check for power at the coil. For good there. We can move on over to the cap points and what have you. If that's no good, then we get back to getting the digital meter out and test it on this coil. And basically, Mopar made it really handy. See how much room there is over here to work on the ignition. Got this rigged in here so you guys can see. Go test on this lead down here. We got juice, 12.1, 12.2, which is about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 less than straight off the battery and I would call that she's on the line of spec if a guy's got I don't know let's say 0.372 repeating or up more at the battery than the coil what that means is your bond to ground is weaker at the coil so you got to clean up your grounds basically and you want to get that as close to the battery as you can obviously you can see the ground cables and Positive cables are in really good shape in this rig, so we're going to leave them. So I've got power to the coil, so now I'll pop the lightning whirler off down here and see what we got going on. What? Can this just move over here? Do we need 19 feet of hose? There, that's a little bit better. Pop that off, like I was saying 14 minutes ago, and uh, see what we got down here. Oh, that's all new too. That's making me worrisome. Most likely means someone's already been doing what I'm doing. Troubleshooting and they just didn't get it figured out. Great. Since the guy's got to check the coil out anyway, figured we'd talk a little bit more about it. I don't think I've ever dwelled down into her before. Probably not. Anyway, this is a new one. So we'll use this to test up here on the bench. And there's really two primary parts of a coil here. You have the primary winding, which goes on the outside of the unit. And that's the first to receive battery voltage. And then you got the secondary winding, and that's up in the center, a little bit smaller. Specs are different depending on your vehicle, so you gotta dig into that. But primaries are typically 0.2 to 4 ohms. And then you're gonna be at 6 to 15,000 on the primary. And also keep in mind, some require external resistors as well. All you're gonna to need to test it is just a digital meter like this. It just has to have the ohms feature, which I think every single one does. I don't know. This digital meter's got a few different settings for the ohms. I'm gonna start at 200 when we do the primary here. I just take your common lead to the negative side. Your red over here, and you can see we got 3.7, so that's fine. Then I gotta turn this one to 20K 
so our reading shows up right here. And then just take your common, stick it right down the center, touch it over here. You can see 8.7, call it 8.8. .8. So this coil is definitely good, and that one does not need an external resistor. I got updates. Been dinking around here a little bit. Tested the ballast resistor, and basically if you got 12 in, you need 12 out. You can also run resistance on that guy. And again, it varies on vehicles, so just look that up. I got her bypassed right now just to check the rest of the wiring. And you can also bypass it if you're on a different coil. This is a 1.5, so you need the ballast resistor, but there's some upgrades out there where you don't. So primary is 1.5, secondary was 10, so I think this coil is just fine. So I tore the points out of it, and they're fairly dirty. And I did bring another set with me, so I'm going to drop them in quick and see if I can get some lightning out of that again. And then we'll put the ballast back in at that point. Okay, new points are in. Got those adjusted with the old business card. Carry a couple of them in the pocket. Got the battery hooked up. I'm going to keep that bypass because I'm just running off of this coil for now. But we should see or hear spark down here. So we should be good to go now. I'll just uh, put the ballast back in line, get the old coil hooked up, do one more test on it. And then we're back to where we started 74 months ago. Dump some fire maker down here and see if it barks at us. Ballast resistor's back in. The original coil, I got great spark. So I think what I'm going to do is I got a new lightning whirler cap and lightning hoses. I just might as well put them in now because there's no sense in doing something twice. And if she don't run, well, that increases the value by at least six bucks. Well, I'm really sorry, but I lied right to you. I don't got wires on the service truck. I thought he did. I guess I just got in a hurry. Do got a capillator and a whirly bob. Stick them in anyway. These the same, close enough. Oh, we got fire down here still. Better get that disconnected. Okay, how does this go on? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, is there a certain index? I thought so. Down like that. No? Yeah, this has got to be it. Well, what's all this clicking? What's that mean? Okay, so this has got to go clearly on this side of the rig down here. Well, for Pete's sake, I just ruined that wire. What is going on around here? Great, now we got to cobble that together. I just, I can't have nothing nice. Should I put plugs in this? Let's just run them first. Is this one stuck too? Well, how come all these are stuck in here? I can't be breaking all these wires off. They can't. Welcome to non-fictional story time with Derek. Hi, I'm Derek, your host. I really don't like making spark plug wires. Is this gonna work? Probably not. All right, everything, everything's back to factory. One, five, three, six, two, four. I think she spins clockwise. Anyway, that's what I got her dialed to. I'm gonna clean up a few things here and then I get some more gasoline, throw it down the fuel, make it happener, and hopefully she pops off this time. We got cage? Oh, I don't know. I think that's on. Let's see if I get a dash light out of it. Yeah, I got lightage. All right. Give her just enough gas to start a fire. Here we go. She's a runner. Sounds pretty good. All right. Uh, let me see if I can bottle feed it just a hair. I don't know what juice this is, but.
That's great. Hey, I don't hear any bad valve train noise. There's no knocking. I don't know if it's got oil pressure, but you'd think she'd be just wrapping away in there if she didn't. Definitely heard some exhaust out the back. I forgot to even check if the muffler was restricted. So, I think it's time we maybe go ahead and change on the oil then before we run her too much more. Could this really have just been parked because the points are bad? It's just mind bottling. What was I doing? Oil. Got her up on stands and the sub connecto, not a frame, kind of a frame holds the motor in and the wheels. Looks solid, no rot really. We got a locked up wheel on this side. What do we got over here? Clearly a hot rod drum. This one's, uh oh. Oh, that's right. He told me this was missing lugs. And their left hand thread. I don't have any of those. Let's check the brakes. Oh, yeah. That seems fine. Zero pedal. Locked wheel. One kind of turns. Don't know what the rears are doing. I'm assuming he drug it out here from the garage, so it's got a kind of rollish. Anyway, I'm digressing. What was I doing again? Oil. Let's do that. Nice guy here let me as go on the town rug. I think I can reach it through the fender well here. And these slant sixes, they take the adjustable socket wrench. This is about the one time having nine foot long arms is helpful. Sure makes it hard to get country and western shirts though. Hey, looks like this front brake line might have been replaced. She's got a nice swoop on it and it definitely don't look factory. Body parts check. I think I'm good. You know, it really is important to use the proper oil in your engine. Some of them can be really finicky. So I did the right thing and just grabbed this because it was on sale. It also says 50% better, no idea than what, but it won something. But in all reality, she's diesel oil, and any diesel oil is good in my book. She's got extra vitamins and stuff in it. And you need these dinosaurs on the flat tappet cams. Dang it. Easy. Easy. Oh, I think I got it. I like to run these here Wix filters. And it really did have a Motorcraft oil filter on there from 1982. Huh? Oh, well, if you don't believe me, just give me a second and I'll show you. Oh no, just put 17 gallons right down on the coil. Brake clean, I'll take that right off. There you go. And you know what? I think this is actually a legitimate thing. Same oil filter or housing or something. Some of them hang off the front. I don't know. If you know what's going on here, just bleep blooper down there in the comments and straighten us all out here. You want to throw some fresh gas in these units, so I drained this out of my 65 C10 that's been sitting a year and a half. That'll work. Got this pump ready, so I'm just going to snip on a hose, snag it into the tank down here. And then I'll swap this filter out quick because I don't know what's in that yet. And then basically we're just going to look for leaks. I'll try to fill the bowl up, see if the needle's stuck. And what we're after here is see if we can get this thing just idling, get her up to operating temp, look for any leaks, let the head gasket soak in. We know we got some juice in the transmission. On these Mopars, you want to fire them up in the neutralis gear. This one, since she's the push button flavor, that's right where you start off. This is actually the last year of the old push 65. They went to the column or had the floor shift. But it's better on the transmissions when they've been sitting for a while. Fire them up in neutral like that. I'll get some hose and a filter here and get this going. How many feet we need? 17? Something like, I don't know. How's this look? Hey, how's this look? Yeah, we'll just, that's gonna be, that's what we're gonna go with. 
sure wish folks would write dates on these fill filters, but maybe that makes too much sense. I don't know. This one does look like it's older than me. So she's got to go. Well, why is this jammed up? Oh, Pittsburgh. I suppose I could just use a real plier, but for some reason I don't have one in my toolkit. But I do have 17 play scripts. I don't know. Car quest, let's go on a quest. That's wrong. Did have a catchy tune to it though. Oh, this hose is just a rotten. Well, you're in here. This just, you better do it now or you're gonna have fire and well, I got so much sweat coming down into my eyeballs. I just can't see nothing. I don't know if this is making a difference. How come I can't see my clamps now? Well, the NHRA fuel system's plugged in. We got safety everywhere. I think we're ready. I'm gonna try to fill the bowl up on the carburetor here and then squirt some go juice down her, light it off, and then it should start pulling fuel to fuel pump works, I guess, in three to five seconds, and then we'll see if she idles. All right, here we go. Feel yet. Should be here by now. Well, wasn't really feeling like drinking gas today, but that's what I'm gonna have to do. Sometimes you gotta prime on that line. There's just too much air in that diaphragm and that pump is just bone dry. Get out of here. Oh, we got a nest right there. The guys been wondering why these have been in my face all day, but I guess I found the answer. Gonna have to perform a wasp delete. It's like I got them. I just zip tied this on here. I hate to waste it, but what's a guy gonna do? Mm. There it is. It's definitely old gas. Okay, got that plugged in. Need another zip tie. Well, let's try her again. See if she'll pull fuel. Here we go. Still no fuel. Wow. Guy shot down to the hardware store, picked up this primer bulb. I had to wet the old back neck anyway. Yeah, and with this, I was able to tell my zip tie just wasn't cutting it. Had a leak down here, but I should be able to pump some fuel. Maybe. There we go, feel it now. So now we got fuel up in the filter. And because I can't squeeze this, I know that the float needle's working properly, allegedly. So we'll try to fire her off again and maybe she starts sucking some fuel into the fuel make it happener. Yeah, we can get this thing idling. I'm running out of daylight pretty quick, so this stuff just, I got it. This needs to start hurrying up here. Do we got juice in this? I think I already checked that. I don't. We'll worry about that later. Well, let's just see what it's going to say now. By the way, the gas in that jug apparently is not good. It's basically orange. I'm not sure what color fuel is supposed to be, but I don't think that's right. Here we go.
Too much throttle. Throttle is stuck wide open. That'll get you ready, you know. My wasp friends are back. Hey, I burnt your house down. Sorry, man. Okay. Didn't even have to fight it sitting here idling. Kind of it. I don't think this has an oil pressure gauge. That's what I'm mostly concerned about. Yeah, it's got the dummy light. It says it's charging and almost all ready to operating temp. Hopefully that thermostat opens. Sounds pretty good. Got about two gallons in there. Not a ton of blow by. Very little actually. Some old stuff burning off over here. Thermostat's not open yet. Should be soon, according to that anyway. Probably don't have an accelerator pump. I gotta see if I can find another spring. I got juice and all of this stuff, but it's gonna take a little bit to get worked in. Been sitting here idling for quite a while. Thermostat's not open yet. Should open any minute. All oh, these are firing. This is still sticking. I did add a spring, but it's still just not enough to bring her down. It's probably the carb side that's sticky, actually. <clears throat> as soon as I get the thermostat open, then I'll sit there and rock on it. Engine mounts are a little soggy, and I got a power steering belt that's about ready just to delete itself. But it sounds pretty good. Just a, oh yeah, power steering works fine. Horn works. I mean, it's a go in the town rig. I'm not gonna lie. Let's see if it'll restart. Oh, she's ready to go. Well, here's the reality of it. This is probably the best running car that I own. Great. Time to check the old Push-O-Matic Torque Flight 9000. But we got an issue back here with the rear tires. Mainly that they're just jammed into the corner panels and won't spin without destroying themselves. So I'm gonna crawl under there and we might just take them off. I got 72 spares in the trunk.
I don't know. We just, we got to figure something out. A big part of me wants me to just let these eat and self-clearance, but I mean, it's, they're on it right now. And a couple spins, these may pops, they'll pop. And they're already probably from the 70s, judging by the weather cracking and whatnot. So we got to figure out what's going on here. We need two by four spacers or, oh. Well, there's our answer right there. We just got to air these puppies up and pssst, we're back in shape. Are they still in? Oh, they're still in there. Those look like the Munros 1991 edition. Could be wrong. Hmm. I'll get the air compressor out and see what happens. Is anything happening? Junk. Well, we'll try the pneumaticals out. I'm just lazy and didn't want to plug everything in. Here we go. Nothing. Here we go again. Still nothing. I'm just, I'm not getting, I'm not getting the reaction I wanted. How about this one? 17 valves on this. There we go. It's going up really slow. Why is that so slow? I think my compressor must be on bicycle tire mode. Let's turn that up to blow up the world mode. Here we go. Boy, she's just not going up like I thought she would. This is always the case with these air shock elators. We got leakage. Right there. Oh yeah, just a violent one. Well, it's close enough to the shorts of my jigger. Wonder if I could snippelate that, restuffalize it, put a cuff link into the wing of my jigger. And I'm sure we could snip that down and all this would be, you know, it'd be fine. Well, there's about a 13% chance I patched that, right? So. Let's see what she says now. I just I ain't getting much flavor out of it. How about now? Nope. Is she maxed out? Can't be. Well, you stubborn little devil. Come on now. There we go. I don't know how much pressure these take, so I'm just gonna go with all of it. Well, we got a lot in there. Does it say do not exceed? 200. That can't be right. Does this even go to two? Oh, it does. Let's see what it says. 120, goodness gracious. Well, I got her maxed out between all the compressors we got here. I got a little bit of room in there. Just, just enough. This side, I had to get out the quarter panel stretcher. And then I got the lip roller as well. And we just professionally eased this out a little bit. And it's not gonna work, but that's fine. I'm gonna get the jack from up front, scooch up the back. And the reason I'm not putting her on jack stands is if we're gonna drive it, we gotta make sure this works anyway. So I'm gonna lift it up on the suspension and see if we can get her to roll. Oh, hello again. It's so hot. Oh, gotta love them rocks. Right in the kneecap, just bring her down. Let's go down now. The 64 GTs, when they had the slant six and the odds of magic, they had 293 rears. So this thing is gonna have some long legs on her. She's just gonna wanna go down the interstate. Well, let's fire this thing up and see if we got any gears. Easy. I ain't got much room on that fender lip. Oh. Killed it. Well, I 
These Mopar starters are just, they're damaging to the soul. Come on now. I might call you dolphin. You sound like a dolphin. There you are. Okay. Park is off, so we're in neutralis. Reverse. Reverse. Drive. Drive again. Drive. We got drivage. Speedometer even works. Go back in the neutralis. I don't got any brakes. This might take a while. Yes. Well, what are you still turning for? Easy. Reverse. We got a transmission. So I think what I'm going to do is kick her back in the drive again. And I'm just going to let it sit here and eat for a little bit. And I'm going to put some juice on that door. How is it getting worse? There we go. That's been 10, 15 minutes probably. Thought I'd better do something, so I popped the reservoir cap off. And that could be a part of the reason why there's just zero brakes. So I'm gonna top that off to see if I could pump a late some juice in her. Guy's just been doing a simming workout on the brake pedal in there for a good 10 minutes, but I'm getting something. Hook your peepers right onto that rear tire back there. Watch this. I mean, it's not, it's not great, but that's enough to slow me down to take a corner. And that's all a guy needs. I haven't checked for leaks or anything yet. I probably just pretend that I did and call it good enough. I'm sure it's bad and that'll make me not want to drive it. So I think it's time we just drop it down and ease it through town. Sure. I think a guy's got everything buttoned down. Got the air cleaner on it. Got all my stuff put away. These are loose. Water pump squeaking bad. Didn't do anything with the power steering belt. Put this dangerously close to that belt. This is barely held on. Uh, Use that to work goats, but also holds jugs on. So this is fine, I think. We'll just kind of bring this down gently. Don't want to pinch off the fuel, but you got to get one click out of it. And then in the cabin here, I installed my Easer Down 300 right here, and that's hooked on to the gas pedal. So when she sticks wide open, I can, whoa, whoa. Got my shades, got to clear out. I think we're ready to rock. Let's just go jam this thing around a little bit. Got to get this ready. So I asked this fella how long this has been sitting. And that was a long pause, followed by many, 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 many years. But we used it as a billboard, but many years. So first drive in many, many years. Park off. Better pump the brakes ahead of time. Drive. Oh, I forgot about that front tire. I think it's rotating. It's angry. It's really angry. Pulling to the right. It'll slow us down though. We might need that. Oh, that sounds bad when you hit the brakes. Let's go this way. We're just going to ease through town. John Anderson likes to be just swinging. I like to just ease. Yeah, there's not much brakes. There's a little bit. We got a really bad wobble. 
I think that has to do with having nine total lug nuts on the entire car though. Let's give her some onion. Got second gear. Now I gotta try to shut her down. Oh, kind of tricky to run. You gotta bring the throttle back and work on the brakes at the same time. See what she does in the mud. Yeah. Oh no. Come back. I think we might have spun a tire. I think we might have. I'm not gonna check. Let's just say we did. Oh, that bumper is gonna knock that window out. Well, come here, fella. This windshield is slightly inconvenient. Oh! Yeah, I'm a redneck. What are you gonna do? Right, I think this is my turn. I just, there's stuff rolling everywhere. Ooh. She's pretty rough. She is pretty rough. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Whoa! Oh, I got the windshield jammed on the accelerator. <laughs> Hate when that happens. That's some sort of outhouse over here. Maybe that's a bird blind. I don't know. Oh, the blinker's on. Reverse. Come on. Oh, going into the blind. Come on. Go. Go again. Oh, I got about two millimeters from. Hey, there's my gas nozzle neck. This thing is rough. The motor mounts don't exist. But does your dome light work? I'll be dipped. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I hate to, but I think a guy's gonna disappoint some of you fellers because I'm not driving that thing home. It's just, it's a little too gone, I think. Right now, we can make it better, but tires are too dry rotted to even hit 40. I'm missing logs, I got a hanging wheel, something shaking bad in the front. I got no tail lights, the bumpers are gone. Well, I can zip tie them up, I guess. But the paint job just screams, what are you doing, guy? Pull me over. Maybe I could just spray paint it. No, no, I gotta, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be responsible and just say, I'm gonna come back tomorrow with the trailer and pick it up. But there's a lot we can do with this car. It's actually really solid. Maybe even solid enough just to do a scuff and shoot, you know, a 49 foot paint job. I don't know. If you've got ideas, put them down there in the comment box. I do read them. You'd be interested to do something with it. I'm glad we saved it. It seems fairly complete. I mean, some assembly required but anyway thank you guys for watching appreciate you all very much i need a cold snack right now where did the screw part of this go though dang it now i gotta buy another one